funniest thing happened to me. I went to restart my computer because I was hearing an echo in my headset and my uh, Mac decided to um, restart and update. So I had to wait 35 minutes until it did that. But I had a great time with some people on Twitter. If you're not following me, follow me at How to Build a Tent, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all of those good places. And uh, maybe the next time I have to do an unexpected, unplanned update, you'll see me on there. Answered some questions about multi-family housing. Oh, there's my alarm. Better turn that off. Uh, soccer clubs, nonprofits, all that good stuff. So happy to help. Happy to hear from you guys. I'm glad you are following. Glad you email me. Love to hear from you because I want to make you guys successful. 250 making 250. If you are new to the show, my goal for this year is to get 250 of you individuals or families to start a business with the modest goal of making $250 in revenue a month. And the sole purpose of that is to not have it be overwhelming because it's kind of scary going into business. There's that big word you think you let all of a sudden a sky rise goes up into your house and you have you know accounting, you have corporate lawyers and you don't know what you're doing and it's just overwhelming. I don't even want to start, but it's really not that bad. And if you just start and you go through the motions and you just take it as a learning opportunity, you'll find out that actually it's quite rewarding. It's not as scary as you think it is. And it can be a really great thing for you. It could be a really great thing for your family and it could be a really great thing for your community. So consider, pray about, think about starting at least a side hustle. It doesn't have to be something where you leave your job someday. You want to diversify your income. It is very important. Diversification is not a principle to only apply in investing. That same principle can imply, be applied to a lot of different areas of our lives. Very important. We are part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go to flfnetwork.com. Put in HDBT in the memo field. Get a sweet mug. Get tons of benefits. You get $100 off our conference. It's coming up in October. I'm really excited about that one. Let's see. What are we going to be talking about today? We're talking about... Oh, there was this great article, and when I mean great, I mean eye-opening and terrible at the same time, but encouraging for us pundits, us pundits. I'm assuming us pundits means us podcasters. You know, they're still using the P word to get it close enough where they you, they know who, or you know who you're talking, to, they're talking about, but not really saying it so they don't get in trouble, you know, that kind of thing. Um... And then also I want to talk about something I added to working hard. And like we've been talking about that the last couple of episodes have been weaving that in. The importance of working hard. That's the most common attribute to people that are successful is they work hard. And people say it in a sexy way like, oh, we're hustling. I'm a hustler. I'm hustling, bootstrapping, all these things. But really it's just all about working hard. And I really believe that for the most part, Every single one of us, if we work hard at something, we are going to have some measure of success. And I don't know how much that is. It depends on what God's going to bless us with. But just being diligent, working through problems, never giving up, most likely you are going to be successful. Now, I say most likely because life is full of unknown variables. You could be working really hard at being an athlete and then get hit by a car as you're walking across the street and not be able to walk again. Hey, God does stuff like that. God lets things happen like that. And he uses stuff like that. So I'm not going to just say like, you're going to definitely be rich. You're going to have a jet plane if you just work harder than everyone. That's not, that's kind of show. I'm not on TV and not in Texas with a big baseball stadium church, Joel Osteen. Uh, and then also I have an idea for you guys for you are going to put up with this crazy, crazy episode. And let me tell you, it's a crazy episode. It's late for me. I didn't sleep last night. I woke up with a nail through my head, basically. You ever seen that marriage video back in the day, the YouTube video, where the woman wants to talk to her husband about how she feels and the problem, and he just wants to point out that there's there's a nail in the middle of your head, and it's just like, it's not about the nail, and then it just sums up marriage pretty well, but I, that's how I felt last night. I had the worst migraine I've ever had. I ended up throwing up from it even. I've never done that before. I mean, throwing up from a headache. I couldn't see. I couldn't tweet. I couldn't be on my phone. I couldn't see how the Democrat debate went. 
Uh, I heard that was a train wreck. But so this is going to be a little wacky show. But so I want to talk about a business idea that I think's gold. Like I'm really serious. I think this is gold. You can take it. You don't have to give me any, you know, residuals. I mean, you can give me residuals if you want. But I think, and I, you guys can just go do it. Do it wherever you are in your states. Not one person, but all of you. Go do this. I think this would be really great. And then maybe some thoughts on the coronavirus and investing. So let's get into it today. I was talking, who was I talking with? Oh, I was talking with uh, my good old buddy, Chocolate Knox. And we were talking about how much work things are. And when you have success, how much more work comes with it? I think that's one of the surprising things that happens with people that find success, especially early on. Uh, maybe not those that it comes on faster than some other people do, but success brings more work. There's more to manage. There's more to oversee. When you scale things, when you scale your business, when you have to scale to meet orders, to meet demand, to meet customer expectations, well, it requires different ways of doing things. It requires investing more, building out, hiring more people, hiring more facilities, hiring more production. Um, even in an industry like ours in podcasting with being a network, well, we have a conference now and that requ requires logistics, that requires finding sponsors, that requires finding and booking a location. All of these things that you would never have thought you would have to do as just a simple lonely podcaster. But as you grow and new things come, more cost you incur. And it's great, it's beautiful, but you just have to expect it and, and learn how to grow with it. And that is also why that we've talked about, I think I talked about this with Angela when she was on the show, that it's very rare for one business organizational leader to stay with the company through the whole process because not only do different requirements change as far as like what you have to invest in and what you're growing in, what your different um, channels are, but you definitely are going to have people that are going to have to think differently. You're going to have to operate differently. You're going to have to get tighter when before it's just, you know, we do this a little bit, we do this a little bit, and it's just like a total chaotic show when you're starting up, which is good. It's fun. Some people love that. Well, then you got to start nailing things down. You got to start dotting your I's crossing your T's and then eventually when you get big as a corporation you need to have procedures you need to have a bureaucracy yes you do need to have a bureaucracy you need to have all of these different things to protect the company because you can't just have a billion dollar company a multi-billion dollar company and people are still acting like a startup that's where you get lawsuits that's where you get um, a whole bunch of issues that come up but anyways it takes hard work to be successful it takes hard work and what I wanted to add to this was that just like how the Bible talks about how we all have different amounts of talents, that is, that God gives us certain, uh, not just abilities, like we have the, we think, I think of talents at least this way, maybe you don't, but I've always thought of the talents like, oh, I am a public speaker, or I'm tall, or I'm athletic, or I'm great at math, but also, I think it's also with the opportunities you get, the people you meet, the relationships you build, the places you live, all of these things are things that God can give you. And some of those benefits, I guess the culture says privileges, but I hate that word. That word is totally ruined now. But they are privileges. We don't deserve them. Any of them. If we have one talent or we have 10. And I just want to drive this home with you guys that you shouldn't care how many talents your neighbor has, more or less than you. But be working as hard as you can with your priorities in check, right? You don't want to be a workaholic. You don't want to sacrifice your family. You don't want to neglect the other things that God has called you to do. But regardless of how many talents your neighbor on your right, neighbor on your left has, figuratively, of course, and literally, Work as hard as you can to grow and build and cultivate what God has given you to double it, to triple it. And then God is going to bless you. And this is the other thing that I think is really cool with what I've seen God do, at least in my life, is that what God has given you at the beginning or early on in your life, your 20s, teens, 
doesn't mean he's not going to give you more later. So there's no point in being envious or covetousness, coveting somebody else's stuff or thinking, geez, I just wish I had more of these talents. Just work and be faithful and diligent and work hard at the things God has given you and things might change. And at the very least, we know that God has given us these opportunities to use them and cultivate them. So go after them, work hard and just keep your head down, focused on what God has called you to do and you're going to be successful. Just don't get hit by those cars if you're an athlete. <laughs> I don't know why I keep coming back to that one. This is a funny one. I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny. I mean, it's like a car. Whatever. All right, I'm moving on. I had a migraine. I'm not sleeping. My humor is probably very poor today. Very, very poor. Very poor. I apologize, guys. Thank you for any of you who have been hanging on for this long. All right. This is a idea that I've had for a long time. I actually saw... Someone has something like it, but it's not quite there. And so it needs to be approved upon. And, oh, I thought I still had it up. It was a basically a toilet that you have a plumber put into your pipes where you can flush the dog poop uh, down the drain like a toilet. Like you kick it and it pops up and you put it down there and it flushes just like a toilet. So you don't have to throw it away and it doesn't smell in the trash can. You don't bring it inside. You don't have to flush it down the... Toilet. I mean, I love. I always loved having big dogs, German Shepherds, English Mastiffs, those kinds of dogs. I love them. They're the best. They're great. Great with kids. Great with the family. German Shepherds. You know, you definitely have to get them around people. Oh man, I have a story about that one, but uh, that's for another time. But I love it. Anyways, so this company created one, and I don't even think they're an American company, where you step on it, and you put it in, and stuff. But that is not where the value is going to be. Okay, so listen up. If you're looking for a business idea, you're looking for a side hustle, you're not quite sure. If you're an engineer, if you can build things, this is definitely going to be for you. Or you can go find someone to do it. What the thing needs to be is not something where you still have to pick it up and take it from the grass and then put it into the toilet and flush it. It needs to be something where you can put those square pads where dogs are scented and they go when you're initially training them on where to poop. You need to put that on top of the toilet where the toilet, you could just push the button and it will pull it down and flush the whole thing. So you don't have to pick it up. You don't have to touch it. The dog always goes in one area. It doesn't kill your grass. You don't have to worry about walking around and stepping in it. I'm telling you guys, that is a huge idea. Take it, run with it, go build it, go do it. That would be a moneymaker. Could you imagine going to selling people. You're not selling a toilet. You're selling clean yards. You're selling never having your grass ruined again. You're selling the biggest and sole problem with owning dogs is picking up their poop. If you never had to do that again, that is value and you could make a pretty penny. I'm good. You can send me royalties if you do it and you make millions of dollars. You don't have to, but you could. I'd take it. You don't have to. So go be successful. Go do that. I really think that's a winning idea think about it. Just think about it. All right. Last thing I want to talk about today, and then I'm going to cut it early because I'm seriously, I really did have a migraine all night. I was dying. I couldn't, couldn't sleep. And I was repairing, doing a bunch of repairs today on the house. All right. So coronavirus, apparently it's a really big deal. And apparently it's deadly, but not deadly enough where the people that get it die right away. So they carry it. Some people don't even have symptoms. And the markets are flipping out. Everyone's selling off. And the production's down. People are missing, going to be missing their quarterly earning projections, their estimates. So what do you do? You wait. You hold off. I Personally, this is what I would do. And this is not my financial advice. This is just what I would do. If you need financial advice, go talk to a financial advisor. I would wait till I hear the news go through the United States. It's going to get here. I just, as I was recording this, just heard the first case where we don't know where it came from has infected somebody in the United States. It's going to run its course here. And I think the markets are going to drop even more from that. But once it looks like it's gotten its worst here in the United States, then I buy. And then I buy the index funds, S&P 500 and all that stuff. Maybe you can wait until after they report their earnings, but those are all getting priced in right now with all the drops. 
and then you buy and hold. That is my guess on the best way to treat this pandemic because it's probably going to still be lingering on in other countries more than the United States. But I think once it gets here and kind of the news gets in that it's here and it's there's people that are infected and the mar- stock market goes down again, I feel like that is when you know it's the bottom. And again, I'm just assuming that this isn't going to be as bad as everyone thinks it's going to be, that there aren't going to be that many deaths, that, you know, every country is going to shut down trade altogether. But that's my assumption. That's what I think. Um, if you were wondering what it was, if you have any questions, comments, you can reach out to me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. Find me on all the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. Oh, did I not even talk about Kingsman Grooming products? Kingsman Grooming Pros. They have beard stuff, hair stuff, skin stuff, leather stuff, tons of great stuff, high quality products. Go over there, support the Christian company, get premium premium quality products, kingsmangroomingpros.com. Put in HTBT, get 10% off. Support a Christian company, get better quality products than what you're using now and get it cheaper for 10% off with the HTBT code. Go over there now. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.